You may have already noticed in your own practice that when you're working into a muscle and you're putting a lot of force behind it, that it becomes very fatiguing on you and in hard on your body at the same time. But I'm going to show you just how easy it is when you tap into that subtle anatomy and you take the time to do it properly in order to get that muscle to relax, the tenseness relaxed, so the muscle can do its work to unwind itself. You might be thinking right now that the subtle anatomy work is going to be difficult to get into your hands or difficult to figure out. But in fact, it really isn't because you're going to find out that when you learn the technique of going in with light touch, the muscle will actually open up and invite you in. You can get deeper into the body by doing it this way than you can if you forcefully try to push your way into the muscle. And that is because the body's going to protect itself. So when something aggressive is coming at it, it's going to push back. But when you just sit there and just do a very light touch, you wait for it to invite you in, it's going to pull you in right to where it needs the work done. In the previous video, I was explaining to you how subtle anatomy work is going to get down to the root cause of the problem. I developed this whole subtle anatomy protocol in order to cover the body thoroughly. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can get the subtle anatomy, the sense of the subtle anatomy into your hands. So I'm going to show you the first step to begin to find the subtle anatomy. And I'm going to show you on a muscle and I'm just going to use the muscle of my arm because it really doesn't matter if it's a tense muscle at this point or not. You, I want you to get the feel of how you go into finding that subtle anatomy. So all you do is you place your fingers on that muscle and you kind of move around till you feel a nice spot that you want to be on. And then you apply, start applying pressure. Start with about five grams and make it a little more, and very slowly going in. At some point, you're going to begin to feel the muscle push back. The body's going to push back on you. As soon as you feel that, that's the place of donkey donkey. Donkey donkey is where there's equal pressure on both sides. The um, one side isn't overdoing it. The other side isn't being crushed by that over dominant push. So you want to just hold that until you feel that that donkey donkey sensation. And when you feel that, then just wait a few minutes and then you're going to feel yourself. You can put a little more pressure behind it because it's going to soften. So you put just a little bit more pressure behind that and feel your fingers sink in a little bit deeper. As soon as you feel that donkey donkey feeling again, you just stop and you wait and then you go in a little deeper. Once you get in as deep as the body wants you to go, pause and wait a little while and then you're going to begin to feel movement. It might be circular movement, it might be a slippery kind of feeling, but that's when you've accessed the subtle anatomy. So just in the little example that I gave you, you may notice that this is very different than what you're maybe accustomed to or the way that you're used to practicing. The aggressive work is using a lot of force to get into the body and that does not give you the results at all. There's a chemical thing that goes on with that. It's called muscle failure. You're actually taking people into muscle failure when you come aggressively into the body. For example, there was a woman that came to me and she was an athlete. She was very, very strong. Her muscles had very good tone, but she had a spot on her back that was kind of wadded up. And I worked her with this light technique. After she was done, she mentioned to somebody else, I didn't hear it directly from her, that she didn't know what happened, but the whole back felt completely different and better and she didn't have the problem. And that was the technique that I used. I used the light technique. What surprised her so much is she couldn't really feel any work being done. And she did mention that she had gone to all kinds of deep, aggressive work and it just wasn't working. So that to me is a really shining example that if you follow these techniques and you do it and you get it into your hands, that this is the kind of outcome that you yourself are going to find available at your fingertips. Once you get a feel for the subtle anatomy on the muscle that I just showed you, then we're going to move out to the rest of the body and align the little tiny joints of the body. Why we want to do that is because if a joint is out just a little bit, it's going to throw the entire structure out because the muscles, the tendons are going to be attaching and that's going to be in, in an awkward position. It's going to be out of alignment. It's similar to if you have an automobile that the front end is out of alignment. 
And so even if the tires are just a small bit out of alignment, you're going to have wear and tear on those tires as time goes on. You can't correct the out of alignment tires by changing the position of the steering wheel. Therefore, you cannot change the position of the alignment of the body of the muscles if some of these little joints are out of alignment as well. So that's why it's so important to work the joints and learn the subtle anatomy so that you can put all of the joints into place in an alignment so that you also don't have wear and tear on your joints as you grow older. So let's just say that the body, the spine is just a little bit out of alignment, just a little tiny bit, not enough to hinder any kind of your movement, not to hinder sports, not to have any pain in it. But what does happen is that these little joints in the shoulder across the clavicles, the little joints there, there's then the elbow um, and the arm is going to be a little bit mis misfitted. And then you're going to go all the way down through the hips and down into the feet. And once you get down into these feet, there's little bones here and there's one particular little bone, the cuboid, that if that is out of alignment, it's going to take the entire heel strike out of alignment. And then you're going to be walking crooked. They oftentimes call that following the line of least resistance because it's just kind of a, the gravity line instead of having the body in a, in a straight position, in a well-placed position so that you are not going to be putting any kind of extra pressure or wearing and tearing on any kind of joint in the body. So in the course that I'm going to be teaching you, the Foundations of Subtle Alignment, I'm going to be systematically taking you through all of the joints of the body and showing you how to, how to find the subtle anatomy and how to feel for what's out of alignment and then how to apply the proper pressure and then allow the body to lead you around while you just put that small amount of pressure as resistance be behind it. I've seen such amazing results by applying this work to people. I've seen it from just old sprained ankles that still had pain, to shoulders that are frozen, to spines that are out, even discs that are out, sciatica. All of that stuff is corrected just with these subtle techniques. It is so amazing and I'm so excited to share all of this with you. In the first video, I did mention something about the subtle anatomy web, which is actually the fascial structures. Now the fascia in the body is everywhere. It's everywhere. It's around organs, it's around bones, it's around muscles, it's everywhere. It's just massive. So when we have misalignment with our joints, the webbing is going to also be out of alignment. And that's the part that we want to learn how to unwind. So for instance, let's just say that this purple is uh, the fascial web. Now bear in mind that there's a lot of layers to all of this, so it goes very deep. But let's say that you woke up with a stiff neck one day and you couldn't get it straightened out very well. So what happened is the fascial web somehow got twisted. So you can see how there's different pulls in different directions. And, and that is going to not only be surface, but it's also going to go deeper into the body as well because it's all connected down and through the muscles and down into the bones. So you can begin to see why it's so important that to also unwind the fascia. But you have to remember that if the fascia doesn't have the foundation that is correct, that is aligned, which is the bones and the joints, then you're not going to be able to really correct the fascia because it's all so connected. It's a very holistic look at the body, body structure, and how we can help the body to get itself in alignment to function properly because remember that function will always follow structure in everything. Function will follow structure. I just want to emphasize again how important it is for the bones to be aligned because what's coming out of the vertebrae is these little dural sleeves that carry nerves that go all the way to the organs and they'll stimulate the organ and help them to function properly. So what we need to remember that when we are out of alignment, not only is just the alignment going to give a twisting, but there's going to be a fascial distortion into the organ as well. So we want to give the organ back its place without pulling and tugging on that organ positioning. So this is truly a holistic approach. There's much more to do with it, but this is the foundation for it all.
So in the next video, I'm going to share with you why it's important to do the subtle anatomy work because it also puts the client patient into a deep state of relaxation. When you go into the deep state of relaxation through the body doing its work and aligning it, your physiology will actually come into better balance. The reason for that is because we live in such a stressed world right now that these stress hormones never turn off. So not only do they enjoy that deep, deep relaxation, it also helps them to have the lasting results that they came in for. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you take the time to use some of these techniques and try them out. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you then.